Joining us now exclusively, Starbucks CEO Kevin Johnson, Nestle CEO Mark Schneider. Uh, Kevin, let me start with you. This is a deal where uh, you basically are going to be in a lot of places that you weren't. You take a royalty stream. Tell me what the upside and the uh, because before you did this, I was hoping that consumer packaged goods was going to be worldwide for you anyway. So what did you give up and what did you get and how did you make this decision to go for it? Well, Jim, first of all, I'm here with Mark Schneider, CEO of Nestle, and over the last year, we've worked together to create what we think of as the definitive global coffee alliance in the industry. And just to put this in context, uh, when Starbucks builds our stores in a particular market, we establish the brand. And in North America, we've proven that when we then extend into CPG and food services, it becomes a brand amplifier. Customers then have the opportunity to not only experience Starbucks in the store, but they can also go to grocery, mass merchant, uh, and other CPG points of presence to try different coffees and new coffees, and that in turn reinforces their engagement with Starbucks. This particular partnership is all about taking what we've learned and built in North America and taking it globally. It's also about expanding the addressable market to now bring Starbucks coffee to the Nespresso and Dolce Gusto platform. So this is all about growth, Jim. Well, Kevin, I know that you get a lot of money in. You've been buying back stock consistently. You bought back 100 million shares over the last three years, but the stock is stagnant. Why will this buyback, if you take the money, what will the buyback do? Uh, because uh, so far, the people want growth, not buybacks. Is there a way to energize growth, not buyback, with this additional money? Well, think about what this does for growth. You know, first of all, you've seen we've had great success over the last uh, five years or so uh, with K-Cups on the Keurig platform. This particular opportunity now uh, brings Starbucks coffee to the Nespresso and Dolce Gusto platforms globally. Now, there are more uh, households in the install base of Nespresso and Dolce Gusto than all of Keurig. So this opens up a big growth opportunity. And you think about what this does uh, globally, China. Jim, the opportunity now, we're over 3,200 stores in China. We just opened the roastery, and this brings uh, our business to CPG food services in China. Brand amplifiers, those are all about growth. Now, as you point out, we did commit that we're going to buy back uh, $15 billion, or we're going to uh, return $15 billion of cash to shareholders in the form of buybacks and dividends. With this particular transaction, we're increasing that to return approximately $20 billion of cash to shareholders in the form of buybacks and dividends over the next three years. So this is all this is about growth and it's about returning cash and creating value for shareholders. Um, Dr. Schneider, let me turn to you uh, and uh, have you try and explain to Nestle shareholders why this is a deal that makes sense for your company and what exactly you see as the growth opportunities here behind this decision. Yeah, thanks. And let me just say, I'm very excited about this partnership. I think it builds on a year of hard work between the two of us and lots of years between the two companies of prior contacts where we found out that there's a tremendous amount of overlap when it comes to our assumptions on the coffee market, the focus on perfect coffee and also sustainability and responsible sourcing. So I think the two companies are really very, very much aligned on these issues. Going forward, um, I think it addresses one key weakness we've had historically, and that is in the U.S. coffee market, we were kind of late, and um, I think this one allows us to catch up in retail and food service. Overseas, we're present in more than 190 countries. We have feet on the ground there, so this is where the growth story that Kevin alluded to can play out. China is our second largest market after the U.S., so I think those are the growth opportunities that we're excited about. I'd like to ask... Uh Kevin, whether this is one of those situations, you are agnostic uh, versus Keurig, but at the same time, is this not a, a kind of a dicey time for Keurig, given the fact that they're merging with Dr. Pepper, and is it good to be able to be on both platforms just in case Keurig has a misstep? Well, first of all, Jim, we've had a, a, a very healthy and a positive relationship with Keurig over many years. And we intend to continue to have that relationship. You know, the, the fact that we are the number one share player on uh, the Keurig platform with our K-Cups, uh, we're going to continue to invest and, and grow that business. You know, what, what this does, though, is it says we want to make sure Starbucks coffee is available on all of the world's uh, leading uh, systems platforms, including Nespresso, Dolce Gusto, and Keurig. And that provides customers more choice. And so we see this as a very positive 
uh, very positive growth agenda and one that we're going to continue to maintain that relationship with Keurig and continue to do everything we can to grow our share uh, of K-Cups on that platform. Hey, Mark, it's, uh, it's coming at a time where people are questioning the, uh, the long-term value of consumer products, packaged goods. Uh, Warren Buffett was asked about that on our air this morning, and he said uh, it's not as strong or robust a market as it was 5, 10, 20 years ago because people are more willing to try other brands. Uh, they're getting more used to change in their life overall, and that's separate from the ongoing battles between uh, producers and retailers. Uh, what's your view on that overall picture? Look, I think it's all about variety and change, and I think people are longing for that. And so it's all about giving them uh, that amount of change and novelty and innovation. So if we master that, you know, the sky's the limit. So I don't think the growth opportunity is over, far from it. Plus, you know, there's a significant emerging market opportunity that's still not fully exploited. So I think the future is bright if we do it right in consumer packaged goods. And the rate of innovation has certainly increased over the last decade or so. Uh, Kevin, you did a deal with Kraft, not, uh, actually, and it kind of didn't work, and you had to unwind it. What's the advantage of a deal with Nestle versus a deal with Kraft? Well, Jim, I, you know, the, I would characterize these as two completely different opportunities. You know, first of all, Nestle has a long heritage in coffee. Coffee is part of their core business, and they create premium experiences around coffee. And so the opportunity to now partner with Nestle, who brings not only that heritage in coffee, but a global presence. So, uh, you know, in the past, we had a regional presence. This is a global relationship. It's a global relationship with a company that is, is about all things coffee. And I think this aligns with the strategic agenda of both companies. And so certainly we've had the opportunity to work with, with Mark and his team now for the, for the last year in, in understanding how to shape this. And I think this really is an unlock because it brings us on new systems platforms into new geographies and with the focus that we have in China and uh, single serve coffee, this is a wonderful opportunity. Now, Mark, I know that uh, we're here to talk coffee, but you have a substantial position in pet food. Pet food has been just a very, very tough category, but a lot of, feel, a lot of people feel the pet wars are over and that perhaps uh, pet food is bottom. What's your take on it? Look, we are excited about pet food, too. I mean, this is one of our other growth categories that we are very, very much involved in, and uh, we are one of the uh, leaders in that market. So lots of interesting things underway there, and we're committed to future growth in that area, absolutely. Uh, Dr. Schneider, given we don't get the opportunity to speak to you too often, I'm also going to ask a question not related to this deal, uh, but one that investors ask a lot about Nestle, uh, the L'Oreal stake whether or not there's an opportunity perhaps now to sell it back uh, to that company. Um, can you update us at all on your thinking, given the pressure that was brought to bear by Dan Loeb roughly a year ago or 11 months ago, uh, and others who have at least been focused on what they claim is a non-core asset, one that should be monetized? Right. Look, I understand lots of investor interest on this subject, uh, but I have nothing to add to what we said prior. Um, um, and I think the latest disclosures from us were from February. Uh, Kevin, just to back on, uh, on Starbucks for a moment, we talked uh, recently about uh, the incident in Philadelphia uh, and how you're uh, training people to be able to deal uh, more sensitively. And where do you think you are in that process? Well, Jim, we know we've committed to close all of our 8,000 company-operated stores on the afternoon of uh, May 29th. And we are currently working with, uh, you know, our external advisors and uh, external organizations to help shape that program. You know, we think of it as a day of discovery. And, you know, this will be a journey, and this is one step in that journey, but we are... Uh, you know, we're, we're right in the middle of crafting that and putting that together, and uh, we're looking forward to the opportunity to, uh, to roll that out and experience that. We think it will make us a better company. And, Kevin, uh, the proceeds uh, on this deal with Nestle, how does that money get used? Does it change any uh, the needle on CapEx or openings, closures, uh, wages, anything like that? Well, it doesn't, it doesn't change the needle so much on CapEx. You know, we continue to uh, invest to build new stores. We continue our growth agenda with our Starbucks retail stores. In many ways, this allows us to focus more of our management time and attention on those core value drivers, which is what our streamline activities have been all about. You know, we'll continue to source green coffee and roast that coffee and provide that to, to Nestle for distribution. 
Uh, you know, in terms of returning cash to shareholders, though, this will increase the uh, the $15 billion we've committed will increase to $20 billion over the next three years of cash returned to shareholders in the form of dividends and buybacks. Uh, but you know, we're gonna, this is allowing us to focus more on the core value drivers for shareholders. Uh, finally, Dr. Schneider, the $7.15 billion upfront payment here, can you give any, uh, us a sense as to why that was the number? Uh, what that is indicative of in terms of how you will think overall of the opportunity here? Yeah, look, um, I think it's all about a starting point for a global and perpetual partnership. And so, of course, in addition to the upfront payment, there's going to be a royalty stream and there's going to be sourcing uh, of coffee. So I understand it's pretty hard from the outside to judge this. Uh, we did not see this so much like a transaction purchase price where it's a one-shot deal, but rather it's the beginning of a long-term partnership where I think both partners are incentivized to create value and to grow. And uh, this is the key aspect of it. Kevin Johnson, CEO of Starbucks, Mark Schneider, Dr. Mark Schneider, CEO of Nestle. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Great to talk to you. Thank you. Hey there. Thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.